So Brother Lester may be here. Good evening, and welcome to Northwest Baptist Church uh, uh, Wednesday night Bible study, Burning Questions with Bob and Darren, episode 14. And I'm Darren Simpson. This is my friend, yeah. Brother Bob Simpson. And uh, we're excited to be with you tonight. Yeah. Uh, this is our, uh, our uh, Hurricane Laura edition. And, uh, and so we're having a good time tonight. Not very many here. That's okay. Uh, but if you're here, then that's a blessing. And we want to be a blessing to you tonight. We do have a burning question we want to discuss. Mm -hmm. And our burning question tonight is, what is the Lordship of Christ? And why is it so important? This is an important subject. Do you agree? Very important and yeah. oftentimes misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, it, it, we, we know that, that Christ is Lord. Yeah. Uh, the question is, how, what does that mean in reference to us? Right. Uh, it, it's a subject that's often <coughs> overlooked uh, by, by American Christians, I think, very much simply for the reason that we're, we're a free people. We've never experienced what it's like to live under a sovereign, sovereign yes. rule, yes. to have a king. Yes. Um, that's very foreign to us. Yes. In fact, it's uh, an, you know, anti-American to have a king. <laughs> uh, we, that's pretty much why we're Americans is because we didn't want to have a king at one point and we got rid of him yes. um, or got out from under his rule. But, uh, and so we don't really often think about what it means to live with someone who is our Lord, we talk about lordship. We yes. sing about the lordship of Christ. We think about, we we praise that He's sovereign and that, that He's on the throne. Uh, we pray to Him. We say, "Dear Lord," you know, when we mm -hmm. pray. Very rarely, I think, do we actually live this out in our daily life. I agree. I think a lot of times we think we have the option. Yeah, we yeah. have an option to be obedient or to, or not, and 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 uh, we we don't realize the the very intense sovereignty expressed even in mortal kings when uh, subjects stood before them and if they've expressed any rebellion at all, they could lose their life just like that. Absolutely. There were, there was, so it was a very serious thing, and yet we, we know Jesus to be the sovereign Lord of, uh, established by his Father in the whole, over the whole earth, and yet sometimes we, 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 we think we have the right to decide if we want to be obedient or not. Yes. So tonight, as we discuss this, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the subject of lordship, salvation, and why that's a false teaching, just because it kind of seems kind of close to this subject, given that lordship is in the subject and uh, the, the title of it. But also, hopefully this will give you an appreciation for really who Christ is and his true position, how that should reflect on our life. And also, I, I pray that you will appreciate the kind of grace and mercy that God shows us yes. when we do not submit to his lordship. Mm. Um, so that subject of lordship salvation, uh, it's confusing and we need to differentiate lordship salvation from what we're talking about tonight. So yes. what, is, what is lordship salvation? Well, lordship salvation is a doctrine that, that tells people you have to accept Jesus Christ as your lord in order to be saved. Right. And... Um, it's a, it's oftentimes touted. I, you can hear it on TV all the time, or you can hear it, in, or you could see it in books. Um, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a terrible misunderstanding, right. because a, a person who's not saved has no idea how they could submit to the lordship of Christ. Yeah, they, they don't and, have the tools for it. And this lordship, it's kind of, it's uh, there's a little different semantics here too, because certainly. You have to acknowledge who God is. You have to to get saved. You got to acknowledge who Christ is. That He is God. Yes. Um, but it's not just acknowledging that He's God, but also living a specific lifestyle that expresses that, which often includes additional rules for living, <laughs> and really it kind of uh, removes the possibility of immature Christians. Yes. Um, and and we know from Scripture yeah. that there are such things. Right. Scripture is very clear that there are. There are people actually who are going to go to heaven and all their works are going to be burned up. Right. And they'll be left with nothing. That, you can't be less, ma less mature than that. Right. That's, that's, that's a person who does nothing. But the, the fact is that you do have to recognize Christ for who he is. Sure. You have to recognize him as divine. You have to recognize him as the only source of salvation. Yeah. You have to recognize him as, as your savior, your personal savior, you have to believe in him, put faith in him for the salvation of your soul. 
and that, but it's not anything to do with how you live right. at that moment. Because an unsafe person, I mean, an unsafe person can't look at a Christian at a Christian living and say, "Oh yeah, I know, I can do that." Because if they think they can, they're going to be getting saved based upon their works. We can't, we can't bribe or earn our way into That's heaven. Correct. We can't say, "Oh yes, I believe," and now I'm going to do all those things to, you know, so that you'll be pleased with me, God, and, right. and you'll see that you're. You're my Lord. Right. Uh, we happened. can't. We can't do it. it That's it's. It's. Uh, and that that turns grace into works. It's no longer grace. Yes. Um, you know, uh, uh, faith with by works. That's not yes. grace anymore. And and God's salvation that He's planned for us is strictly through grace uh, in believing in the Son Jesus Christ and the work that He performed yes. for us on the cross, buying Amen. buying us from our sin. Uh, but but. We don't have a. It's not our obedience That's right. that has secured for us his for, his forgiveness and our and the favor that we receive in God and all the benefits of salvation. It's not our obedience. It was Christ's obedience. Well, you know, Jesus was very clear when he told uh, some some people who asked him, "How do we do the works of God?" And he said, "This is the work of God that you believe on Him who He has sent." Yeah. It was very clear that it was nothing about what you do. Yes. It was all about what you believe in your heart, and that has nothing to do with what you will do later on. It does change you, and by God's grace you will grow, and you will do things, but it's no guarantee or no requirement. In order to be saved, it's only believing. Yes. Let's, let's share a couple of verses here. Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but Amen. according to his mercy, mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Or Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves we have no part in it whatsoever except in our belief. That's right. uh, 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 it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So clear. So it's very clear yes. that, uh, you know, the, the lordship, semantics, however you want to define that, is not based on us performing a specific type of lifestyle once we've trusted him. God works those things out in our life yes. and, and we'll grow, hopefully, if we submit ourselves to the mm -hmm. Lord and we submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, we'll grow from being babies, uh, baby Christians and grow out of being carnal Christians into being uh, uh, mature and Amen. hopefully upright Christians that are following Him. That's but right. those things don't manifest in the moment of salvation. We're not immediately mature Christians. And... And because of that, it's that those things are not uh, right. dependent on our salvation. And there's not some work that we right. that we have to manifest to indicate that we're Christians. You know, the the uh, I think the God speaking to Samuel is very clear. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Mm -hmm. Only God knows the heart that has put their faith in Him. Now, the the truth is though that in in some cases that manifests. But then look at David and uh, King David and the things he committed. You would. See People who yeah. were talking about lordship salvation right, yeah. would have thought that David would have lost his salvation. Right. But he didn't say that. He said, "Don't take from me the joy yes. of my salvation." He didn't say anything about don't not lo about losing his salvation because he took a man's wife and killed him. Yeah, yeah. And it's just not the case at all. So, uh, <laughs> if you're listening tonight and and you're listening to this uh, <laughs> rabbit trail we've already chased, uh, <laughs> just understand that your salvation is offered through Jesus Christ Amen. to you. And it's offered by His grace. grace only. It's not something that it's that is earned. Grace is unearned, unmerited, undeserved favor with God, and so that grace uh, 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 gets for us that favor with God that we can't find on our own. It's only through Christ. Finding, you know, doing works for salvation, getting your life cleaned up before you get saved. It's never going to work. You're never going to be ready. So don't put it off anymore. Put your faith and trust in Christ today. And if you have questions about that. Give us a call. Now, let's talk about lordship, the lordship of Christ. Uh, incredibly important subject for Christians. Yes. And, uh, you know, again, we must, we really need a, a deep understanding of this because um, for us to be able to conduct ourselves as true biblical Christians, we're going to have to recognize Christ's lordship, his reign, his sovereignty over our life. And so um, what let's let's consider what it means first it's important for us to understand that christ is lord he is the lord and that word lord again is 
kind of a strange word for us. We don't use it in our American culture very often because we don't have lords or kings or our sovereigns here. Uh, but he is Lord in a way that we're going to talk about tonight that's absolute. First, he's Lord because he is God. Absolutely. He has, he has been given all authority. Yes. And, um, and as, as God, as the yeah. creator, he said, you know, uh, before um, Abraham was, I am. But he also, as the Bible tells us in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus... Was in the was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. Yes. So He is the God of creation, and 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 as such, then He has to be understood. He has that authority over creation. Yeah, that's his that's his role. Yes. I mean, that is his position. Yes. Is ultimate ultimately He's the creator of all things. He's the owner of all things. You know, when you have a king or a sovereign, mm -hmm. uh, not like what we even see in England, they're not. Uh, they have a constitutional monarchy. Right. They don't have an absolute sovereign right. uh, there. But when you have a, a rule of an absolute sovereign, they own everything. Yeah. Yes, they do. And they own everybody. And and this is the kind of sovereignty that Christ has, that he is absolutely sovereign. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you read in Psalms 103, 19, it describes this very clearly. It says, The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his king kingdom ruleth over all. Yes. He, is, he is king absolute. He is the... He is uh, sovereign above all, and, and it is because, just his position, because he is God. Amen. So yeah, and he, also in Colossians, we read, yeah. For by him were all things created that were in, the earth, in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions yeah. or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, yes. and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Yeah, so thrones, that would be other, other kingdoms that we yes. see on the earth. Mm -hmm. Dominions, um, uh, certainly, you know, a, a areas, control area. Yeah, a control know, area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Principalities or powers, this would be even uh, supernatural beings. Yes. You know, he's not just uh, uh, king and sovereign over what we see here on earth with our own physical eyes. Uh, but if we could take back the veil and see the spiritual world, uh, the demons and the mm -hmm. angels and all of these things. He is Lord of all of that as well. Yes, he is. Yeah, in fact, uh, you know, the, the, Paul said, you know, we, we battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and yes. powers. So it is a different kingdom altogether, yeah. the principalities and powers. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, he's, but he is over all of them. He's over all of them, yeah, every absolutely. bit of it, yes. Um, also, he is Lord because Jesus, he was the perfect human. Yes. And he, he bought for us, uh, our salvation. He won salvation for us, and he also conquered death. And so because of these things, he has been given universal dominion. And I want to read from Ephesians chapter 1. It says, Which we wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power. There's those things again. And might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, mm -hmm. and gave him to be the head over all yes. things, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth mm. all in all. So mm. because of his, uh, what he did as a man, yes. uh, he has been given universal dominion. Yes. So God had given dominion of the earth to man, yeah. and then man sinned and gave it over to Satan. Right. And God reclaimed it by becoming man, Dying and creating, the, uh, becoming the second Adam, yeah, and then all those in him were were saved. But he, as a man, yeah, absolutely, he, as a man, he took the complete. It's, it's an amazing idea, isn't it? Yeah, idea, it really it's is. Beautiful. Um, he is also Lord because he, in his own infinite authority, has claimed universal authority. When we read in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, uh, All power, all authority is what he's saying, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then, of course, he gives the great commission to yes. go into all nations and preach the sure. gospel. And, and uh, you know, but what he's saying is, is he's, he's claiming all power to himself, all authority. He's taken up the mantle. Yes. And he... he he is the sovereign yes. because he's claimed it. He's, he's, he's taken up the mantle. Absolutely. So his power over all things, people, all time, all existence, all creation, yeah. all creation. And um, so he, he submitted and he died. And when he 
came back then, he was given that authority by the Father and claims it to his own. Right, and it's not just authority over believers, is it? No, it's no. authority over, in fact, he, he, he paid for the, the sins of the world. Right. So he bought everything back, and he then is the one who judges the right. condemned and the saved. Yes, yes. And it's beautiful. So believers and unbelievers, whether you believe or not, he is uh, in absolute control and, and in absolute Lord. rule mm -hmm. over your life. He is mm -hmm. your Lord whether you submit to him <laughs> or not. Um, so because of his lordship, let's consider a few things. Because of his lordship, we are to obey Christ in all things. When there's a true sovereign, yes. you know, and we'll talk more about this, but when there's a true sovereign who, who rules over a, a, a nation mm -hmm. and, and an absolute sovereign who owns everything, owns everybody, you don't tell the king no. <laughs> you, just, you don't tell the king no. When he says, uh, when he gives out a decree, you follow it. Yes. And, and you do not sway at all. And, and so we have a few reasons uh, as to why, first, we want to say this is not a requirement for salvation, as we discussed earlier. No. Um, you know, Romans 3.24 says that we're justified freely by his grace. Again, that subject to grace again through the redemption yes. that is in Amen. Christ Jesus. So, again, it was Christ's obedience that secured for us our uh, forgiveness, not our right. obedience. Because we never could have worked to that point, could Absolutely. we? Absolutely. But no. it is certainly an expectation that we obey Christ in all things. And if we'll do that, it will have a profound impact upon mm -hmm. our everyday life. Um, yes. He's Christ is on the throne, and so he deserves our obedience. Yes. He, he not only he deserves it, but he does. He asks for it. The, the, the beautiful thing about Christ yeah. is that he has a, he has a qualifying way of mm -hmm. asking for it. You know, his mercy was extended to us in salvation. His mercy is extended to us in growing in understanding and practicing of lordship. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and he and he's con uh, thankfully he's extending mercy and grace to us right now. <laughs> those of us who are yes uh, disobedient. Yes, yeah, which is most of us. Yes, well, we, we do disobey, but as we grow in grace. You know, then we are putting in place yes. the work of Christ's lordship in us. Yes. And it's, and it's, so by his grace, it's done. It's beautiful. Yes. It, uh, uh, Christ is on the throne. Verse uh, Colossians 3, 1, it says, if, then be risen, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Because, because he's on the throne, yes. we're to be seeking Absolutely, Him. and because we're risen in Christ, yeah. So yeah. that and that can't happen before, right? Absolutely. So that is something that follows salvation. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's also God's command. You know, it's also His command that we serve Him. John fourteen fifteen. Mm -hmm. What did He say to His disciples? He said, "If you love Me, keep My commandments." Yeah. I mean, it was just so. The, and that the, wasn't a request, was it? Um, it's a it's a command. There was a, there was a qualifying statement. Yes, there. the qualifier is if you love me. Yeah. And 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 actually, you see, an unsafe person could not possibly love Christ. Yeah. But God's love is shed abroad in our hearts. Therefore, we're able to respond correctly to Christ. Yeah. And so He says now. So if you do, if that's working in your heart, then keep my commandments. And and uh, you might goes on to say that these are not grievous. Uh, you know, in, in, in other places in Scripture. So Christ is saying that his commandments are, are light. His burden is, his burden is light. His yoke is easy. Um, and it, because it's, it's based in love, which is unique for a sovereign. Yeah. And, you know, no earthly sovereign ever exer exercised that that I know of the way Christ did. That he paid the full price for our, for our salvation and redemption. And yet at the same time, he gives us an option to learn to love him and to be re to to be obedient to him in what we do. Yeah, this is where we've, we've talked already about his grace and his mercy to us. Yeah. But he, he's also very long suffering. Yes, he is. You know, he's very patient mm -hmm. with us. Uh, it, while we work out our own salvation through fear and trembling, as we we work those things out in our life, and we right. continually learn to submit ourselves to him and grow in our understanding. Yes. Uh, he he gives us what we need. Especially grace is what we yes. desperately need more than anything. But he gives us what we need to help us learn how to love him. Yes. And uh, But he, he does command it. He commands that we serve him. He says, yes. if you love me, keep your commandments. Or Romans 12.1 is another great 
passage. Yes. Would you read that for us? Yeah, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, yeah. by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah, it's it, reasonable because uh, <laughs> because He's God. Yes. Yeah, and then think is. about what He's done for us. And not, not even just because of those things, but because of who he is, yes. because of his command. Yes. Uh, it is our reasonable service that we present ourselves completely to him. And it remember what it said in there? It said, holy and acceptable. acceptable. So uh, this already precludes a little bit of uh, obedience and submission beforehand, too. You know, we, we need to have given ourselves to trying to live a more holy life. It, yes, uh, when he says holy, it, it's that submission, that sacrifice is made holy. Yeah. You know, you remember what and we talked about Isaiah chapter 6. Yes. You know, and, and, and uh, when Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and he was on his face and he says, woe is me. Yeah. I mean, he had already prophesied and there was five chapters ahead where he had done prophecy for the Lord. And yet, when he saw the Lord, he just fell on his face and said, woe is me. And the seraphim came and put a tongue and he said, now this has cleansed you. Yeah. And isn't that beautiful? See, though it's the work of God in us as we submit to the to the realization of how holy he is yeah. and how short we fall. And when we do that, he gives us the power to become sons of God in walking in that sonship. Amen. Maybe even more encouraging, these are kind of difficult, harsh, uh, could be taken as harsh uh, uh, realities that God commands this yes. and that he deserves this. But, you know, he's also made us for this. Yes, we're, we're to obey him because he's made us to obey mm -hmm. him. If we look in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, one of my favorite verses says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, Amen. which God hath before ordained that yes. we should walk in them. Yes. That means, uh, if you think about what that means, it means, Christ has made us to do certain things, to mm -hmm. obey him in certain areas of our life, to follow through in certain decisions where he's leading us, uh, mm -hmm. and he's prepared certain events in our life mm -hmm. where we have an opportunity to obey, to submit mm -hmm. ourselves to him, to trust him during a time of trial, yes. and then to show his glory, yes. to be able to share the light of the gospel with others through this. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's a tremendous opportunity for us to be part of God's grand plan and we're definitely part of it yes we're we are made for that and 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 it's amazing that it's in this earthen vessel yeah you yeah. know that we it's a flawed vessel but god can make it perfect and usable to his glory yeah oftentimes we we think about you know what could i do to serve the lord and we feel so inadequate yes uh we feel like well what could i do <laughs> why would he want anything from me but you know the fact is god has made us able to do this has, has made us for this purpose yes and so we should take solace in that, it, yes. that because he's made us for this absolutely uh we're capable he is capable to make us yes. able and so because he's capable we're capable amen amen so so we and but see one of the things one of the surprising things is that when we do that we find the deepest satisfaction yeah. and joy in life. It's the only place it comes from. Once we have been made new, then our greatest joy is, is the great joy that comes from doing what God intended for us to do in the first place. Yeah. Well, let's, I mean, let's think about what our American culture tells us right now. Yes. I mean, it's, you need to find yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to find your own career. Uh, that's going to be what defines your life, your career and your family and your children. And those all wonderful, wonderful things uh, that are, uh, you know, wonderfully important. And God can use those in our life. But but all of them will fail to give us uh, the kind of fulfillment that God can give us. That's exactly right. And in, in, in John 15 speaks to that. Yeah. And, you know, he says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. Yeah. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Yeah. And it's a beautiful statement of what gives us the greatest satisfaction and the greatest fulfillment in doing what God had created us to do to begin with. Absolutely. Um, also in Matthew chapter 6, uh, he, he really kind of tells us what, what's important about life. He says, right. life... Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and mm -hmm. steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures uh, in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And then later in that chapter, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is a command. Mm -hmm. And his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. What he's saying is, is your focus of your life mm -hmm. is not to be on the stuff of life, on the temporal, on the... Uh, on the on the on the treasures that are here on earth, mm -hmm. but on the treasures that we have before us, waiting for us in heaven. And uh, I, there's a wonderful illustration, and I don't have it tonight, and we couldn't do it on this media anyway. <laughs> uh, but but when you think about eternity, I yes. mean, we're God has created us in His image. He breathed unto us the breath of life, mm -hmm. meaning man was made an eternal soul mm -hmm. and and a living soul, and so we have an eternal. That's why death is so unnatural for us. Yep. Uh, if you ever uh, had a puppy dog who died, uh, <laughs> you watch what they do. They, you know, if they're really sick, what do they do? They grow, find a corner, a dark corner, and they curl up, and they just wait for death to come because it's natural for them to die. But man, uh, it's not natural for us to die mm -mm. Yeah, because we were made eternal, and so. Uh, we have this eternity before us, but we're so focused on just this 60, 70, 80 years that we have, maybe 90 if we're lucky. And uh, But beyond this is eternity. Yes. And if we have eternity in Christ um, and we've trusted him, we have an inheritance. Yes. We have a treasure that is far beyond our wildest imaginations. And so we're not supposed to be focused on the here and now in this temporal moment, what kind of retirement we're going to have and when we're going to buy our own private island and the ridiculous <laughs> dreams that we have. No, we're supposed to be looking forward to the kingdom. That's right. Um, in fact, uh, Christ also in, in one of his parables ended by saying that no man can serve two masters. Yes. Yeah. And you can either, you either love the one and you despise the other or you despise the one and you cling to the other. And, yeah. and in those situations, we're making a choice here. Yeah. But the sovereign has given us the the right way to go. He has told us what we should do. The question is, are we going to be obedient or not? Yeah. And and in His mercy, He allows it. But in His in His sovereignty, He deserves it. Mm -hmm. He is worthy of all that we can give Him. So. He so loved us, then we ought to love him. Mm -hmm. You know. So in, in response to that, then we lay up treasures in heaven because it glorifies God. Yeah, yeah, and we get deep, deep satisfaction yes. from that. I, you know, mm -hmm. I've I've shared this before, uh, but you know, having having been we've been married about twelve years, and um, I've had a different career before I was in ministry. And Melissa, of course, is a school teacher, and. And uh, going into ministry was not a lucrative decision. I can tell you, there's not a lot of treasures here on earth, um, especially that first four years uh, at, at Temple. And uh, but God, you know, provided a way for us. And and but I can tell you, you know, in that time before we mm -hmm. lived, when we lived before when we lived in Bedford, and I had a really good job at AT and T. My wife had a really good job <laughs> in her school district, and we were making really, really excellent money, mm -hmm. um, we were not nearly as happy then as we were serving the Lord. And our fulfillment, our j joy was much greater having submitted ourselves to, to Lord's, the Lord's uh, leadership in our life. And uh, let me tell you, there's no, there's no <coughs> better place on earth uh, than, than being right where God wants you to be. There's no question. And so trying to lay for yourselves up treasures here, all the things we think about, cars and having the right house and all these, it's, it's all temporary. All of that stuff is garbage. <laughs> so following the Lord, yeah. you know, being obedient to Him yeah. is what satisfies and it was pays off in the future. Yeah. It, and some people have things in this hand. You know, Jesus said some people will have them to houses and lands and mm, yes. all that they that in this in this life. But eternal is the point. And whatever happens to us in eternal in eternity is what value is what values most. So how do we do this? Well how do we do this? Well, the, how, <laughs> the Holy Spirit empowers us for this. And we could go to Galatians 5 and, and bumble through Galatians 5 and talk about how the Holy Spirit works in our life and how we're supposed to submit ourselves, walk in the Spirit. Yeah, um, the lust but, the flesh. but, you know, we need to consider what it really means to live under a sovereign power. As we said before, this is not something that's very American no. at all. Um, and and we're most, most all who are watching this are probably Americans, and we value freedom. You know, right now we're, we're looking at uh, an election and, and many of us feel like our very freedoms are at risk here. 
Um, uh, and, and the reason for that is because that's what we value. We value freedom to such a great degree that it, it, it penetrates every area of our life, yes. including our spiritual life. Yes, unfortunately that's true. But in fact, in spite of that, we're actually all under a sovereign. Yes. I mean, yeah. which of us can say, like, the, like uh, you know, James says in his book, you know, go to you, you who say, uh, we're going to go to this city and we're going to stay a whole year. We're going to buy and trade and do all of these things and make money. He says, you don't know what a day's going to bring forth. That's right. You know, say, if God wills, we're under the sovereignty of God all the time, whether we realize it or not. You know, even the wrath of man worketh the righteousness of God. Yes. And, yeah. and, and if God permits things, it's under, his, it's under his sovereign will. That's why Christians should be the happiest people that there are, even in spite of the difficulties of some that we go through sometimes, is that if we submit to those things, knowing that God's in control, then we have peace. You know, I wonder if this would affect, if we think about, you know, him being truly a king, and we try to imagine ourselves in that kingly court, you know, when we go to <laughs> yes. pray, you know, we talk about entering, entering into the courts of his glory, mm-hmm. and, and when we go in to pray, can you imagine going into an earthly king's court and and bowing before an earthly king and asking for your needs and and asking for help? What kind of posture you would have? What kind of uh, what kind of words you would use? And and God is gracious to take us the way we are. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, but certainly we should defer to Him what is due to Him. Yes. Yeah. And, and so hopefully that'll begin in us yes. a change. Uh, a perspective that he is truly the king of our life. Recognizing his lordship. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's so important. Um, and, and if he says, you know, obey the laws of men, like in Romans, you know, chapter uh, 14, he mm-hmm. says, you know, that the, these laws are established by God. And, uh, and, and, and if we say, okay, Lord, you've said for me to obey to these, law, these laws, I'm, I'm just going to accept them. Instead of being rebellious, say, wait a minute, you're taking away my freedoms. I, I get that, but I'm simply saying that our greatest peace comes from submitting to God and letting Him make the wrong things right. Think about the, we, you talk about biblical examples. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to, to Daniel right away. Yes, because absolutely. Daniel, you know, was, was, was taken from Jerusalem as a, as a slave boy. Mm-hmm. And then he was, he was mistreated so that he could never have children. And he was... Uh, he was put in this training school because they knew that the, that the Jewish children were wise. Yes. And they wanted to get their knowledge. They didn't want them to procreate. And so they, they, he, was, he was treated that way, and, and yet he stood for what God wanted him to do. So he wouldn't eat the, the food that they brought, and when he convinced them to let him try his way and they accepted it, Daniel became in great favor. And then he interpreted the king's uh, dreams. Yeah. Uh, Daniel... Uh, went on to serve Nebuchadnezzar and his grandson, Belshazzar. Yeah. Then, when they were taken over by the Persians, he served them. Yeah. I don't, I can't understand, but God gave that man some tremendous grace where he could serve both the Chaldeans and then their, their, the ones who conquered them, the Medes and the Persians, he was able to serve in their court as well and be respected. You see, when you put God first, all of man comes second, and it doesn't matter where you're at, you can serve God in a way that, that honors him. Yeah, and there's, there's totally an opportunity for him to defer to those Babylonian kings and those, yes, the was. Persian kings and, and submit completely. Uh, and, and he did to some degree. He, he cooperated with yes, their he rule, but he never compromised no. on what his true sovereign had told him, what God had told him That's right. and taught him to, uh, to, to how to live his life. And so really that should be an example for us as Amen. Christians here on earth is, yes, we're supposed to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. We're supposed to be uh, good citizens. Mm-hmm. And so we should cooperate with the laws of our land, but that, but we do not uh, compromise where God has said not to compromise. Amen. And uh, so we're supposed to follow God ultimately and completely. Daniel is a wonderful example. And of course his friends, um, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yes, uh, all of those guys. The life of Paul yes. is a wonderful example. Um, Paul, who who sold everything out mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to do what the Lord has called yes. him to do, had called him to do, 
and gave everything, was willing to die, and was given that opportunity many times over and showed himself <laughs> equal to, to being ready. Uh, but God continued to spare him and allow him to suffer some more for the glory of God. Amen. And uh, can you imagine the riches of Paul? Mm. I mean, for his obedience yes. to the Lord. And yes. then, of course, the ultimate example is Jesus Christ. Yes. And, uh, and, and what he accomplished was a salvation of all mankind and uh, it was in the face of tremendous suffering and he so he he uh let this mind be in you which is yeah. also in christ one of your favorite chapters yeah. isn't it yeah. and and so if if that mindset that jesus had to be submitted even to the the, the flings and arrows mm -hmm. of of wicked men yeah to the glory of god then that submitting he submitted to his father. He said, I don't do anything that my father doesn't show me to do. And so we should be the same way. And that is recognizing Christ as being our Lord and being willing to go through whatever it is to make him glorified. But ultimately, this must come from a place of love. Absolutely. We, we've, we've got to do this. We can't do this just out of submission, just out of deciding we're going to be a beaten down slave to the Lord. It ought to be no. coming from a place of love. Amen. He absolutely deserves our love. Uh, we should love him as he loved us first. And of course, we read this already, but John 14, 15, he said, but if you love me, uh, keep my commandments. Mm. And so mm. uh, we should we should show our love towards him mm -hmm. and, and acknowledging his lordship over our life, allowing him to be truly the king of our life because uh, he is, whether you want him to be or not. But God has made it so that just like children under their parents, mm -hmm. children who are uh, obedient to their parents and respectful to their parents, usually some of the happiest children you'll meet. Yes, they are. Children who have all the freedom and can be as wild as they want oftentimes are very unhappy children. God has made us the same way. Mm -hmm. When we submit ourselves to him, when we give ourselves over yes. to allowing him to rule our life, the, the joy is deep and abiding. It stays with us. The Amen. peace that we have, we talked about last week, yes. the peace will pass, that passes all understanding yes. will come in our life. And our, our, the value to our life will increase because we're doing something that has to do with God's grand plan. We're part of his plan. Amen. Instead of just being part of our earthly, uh, you know, sandcastle type dreams um, <laughs> where all, yeah. of, all of that's going to cra come crashing down at some point, whether while we're here or after we're gone, uh, we're part of something that's eternal and wonderful. So submitting to the Lordship of Christ is done by love. Yeah. And it is done... To great joy, mm -hmm. great peace, and to eternal riches. Yeah. In every area of our life, Amen. submit ourselves to the Lord. That's what we've been called to do. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, uh, Northwest Baptist Church members, of course, I'm going to implore you. We're not having a, a full prayer meeting here tonight. And so I just want to share with you some prayer requests. Be in prayer for those friends of ours that we have who are going to experience a lot more uh, uh, damage and destruction from this very powerful hurricane that's about to hit the Louisiana coast. It may be hitting right now. Um, and uh, they're going to experience some very serious damage and possibly their lives will be in, uh, in jeopardy. And, and there's friends, churches that we have uh, that are, are going to experience mm -hmm. that. And, but not just them. Uh, there's many lost people who, yeah. who are going to go through this time. And we need to be in prayer for them. We need to be in prayer uh, uh, together and seeing how we can mm -hmm. minister uh, to those people, not just in our prayers, but maybe some uh, practical ministries that we can uh, that we can yes. uh, exercise on their behalf and for their benefit and for the glory of the Lord. Um, also, be in prayer for our church. We're continuing to open up things, and and uh, uh, Wednesday night, mm -hmm. September 9th, we'll be opening up master clubs for children's ministry, uh, ages three to twelve. Youth group is going to kick off. Uh, a, a, a seventh grade and through twelfth grade, and uh, uh, we're going to have a pastor's class here. We're going to have to quit doing some burning questions for a little while, but we may uh, come back. You never know. Uh, but but uh, be in prayer for our church. Also, September twenty seventh, we're going to have our anniversary Sunday. Pastor mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Summy is going to be our speaker on that Sunday morning and afternoon, and we're going to start afternoon services again after that. And so. Just continue to be in prayr for our nation Amen. Uh, uh, for, uh, that is groaning, this world that's groaning under oh, this COVID Lord. stuff, mm -hmm. and a prayer for our nation as we face a very important election. And uh, thankfully, our hope is not in, uh, in any uh, presidential candidate. Our hope is in Christ, Amen. Um, and he's the one who sets up all powers and dominions, and we can trust him. But we need to be in prayer 
uh, that uh, we'll be given more time to minister as we have. Yes. Um, be in prayer for members in our church who are going through tough times. We have many who are, yeah. who are struggling, and uh, we have a, a brother here who needs a good job. We have some uh, brothers who have lost their loved ones, and we have some who are sick and who are facing illness. Yeah. And, and uh, let me tell you, just it's time for us to pray for them, and that's one of the most wonderful and wonderful things we can do. And so I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. But thank you so much for tuning in. And one last thing. If you were listening tonight and you've never known Christ, never trusted Christ, let me share with you one more time. The opportunity is always available to you. Christ died for you. It says in John 3, 16, a verse you probably know even as a lost person, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his yes. only son that mm -hmm. came from him, that, his, uh, that whosoever believeth in him, in Jesus Christ, uh, shall not perish but have everlasting life Amen. and uh, the, the, he is extending to you today mm -hmm. a hand of salvation asking you trust me that's what he's saying to you trust me and I will I will bring you into heaven and uh, by my grace by my Amen. love and all you have to do is trust him if you have questions about that reach out to us yes. we'd love to share the truth of God's word with you and uh, not just our opinions but truly what God's word reveals to us Amen. thank you again so much for tuning in let's pray together Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so grateful for the opportunity to approach your throne of grace. And Lord, as we do, uh, help us to remember who you are yes. and who we are, Lord, that we are not just uh, free Americans, but Lord, that we are uh, purchased sinners, um, uh, forgiven by your grace, and Lord, that we are owned by you, whether we have submitted ourselves to you or not. So God, I pray you help us to have a, an attitude of submission to you. Help us yes. to have a heart to serve you and love you. Lord, that means we have to lay down our own egos. We have mm -hmm. to lay down our own plans. We have to lay down our own worries and fears. And we have to trust you implicitly. But God, I pray you give us the grace to do that. Yes. Lord, I pray for those who listen tonight, that if there's one that's lost and's never trusted you, that Lord, you give them uh, uh, boldness and peace to, to reach out and, and to, to find what they need so that they might understand what it means to be saved. And that it's not by their works, it's not by being good, it's not by cleaning up their life, but it's by your grace and by your love. And I pray you just help them to get through that. Lord, I pray for our church. Lord, our church has uh, been wonderfully unified and God, has, you have blessed Amen. us tremendously. And we're so grateful for how you've sustained us in this time. But God, we, we also understand that our ministry here is uh, just, we have a small window of time where we can minister mm -hmm. and where we can reach those who are around us, Lord. And I pray just help us to be eager and equal to the task. Lord, help us to be submitted to doing your will here, Lord. Help us to be led by the leadership here, by you, most of all, uh, to do what it is you've called yes. us to do. We pray for those who are going to experience uh, turmoil and pain and destruction tonight in their homes in Louisiana mm -hmm. and in Texas and, and other places as, as this storm uh, goes through our country. We pray for peace and we pray for pr protection and we pray yes. for uh, provision for you uh, to be able to help heal uh, those lives. And Lord, we pray through this that you'll bring people closer to you, yes. that you'll bring some to you who've never known you and they'll trust you. And Lord, we pray for those who whose lives may be lost. We pray that they are saved, Lord. Lord, we pray for our church uh, our church friends, who are chur uh, sister churches, who are um, uh, looking at, at this hitting their churches. We pray you protect them and give them, yes. give them an opportunity to serve in their communities, Lord. Lord, we pray for uh, our church members, Lord, who are suffering, and and uh, we pray for our brother who needs a job, and 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 our brothers who have lost their wives, Lord, and we pray for uh, those who are going through uh, difficult illnesses and things like that. We yes. just ask for your uh, to have peace, to give them peace, Lord, and give them understanding, live, give them grace, Lord, and we pray for a job, we pray for healing, and we pray for comfort, Lord. Lord, we love you, God. We're so thankful for how you've blessed us, Amen. Lord. We trust you. And we pray you help us to live a life that shows more trust and more submission to you than ever before. Lord, help us to do that as we leave this broadcast, as we walk home, as we drive home. And Lord, uh, bring us back Sunday to worship you in power and in truth. We love you in Christ. In name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good night and God bless.